Today's about the Valerie and TJ partnerships. Um, you know, a, a um, not a small undertaking when we first kicked this whole thing off, uh, essentially asking for people to put their money forward first um, before they actually saw what they were buying, just sort of selling a concept, an idea um, that, uh, you know, we'd go out and buy, be a lot more sort of selective in, in buying um, horses that we th thought could add a lot of value to our owners and our stable. And, um, you know, particularly those first Valerie partners, they uh, put a lot of trust in us to do that. And um, it's been great this year to see some of the fruit of, of that trust. Um, you know, initially it was a $2 million raise and uh, we're sitting there here on the Gold Coast. Um, Steve and Tina and Michael and Andrea were there. You know, Platinum Jubilee selling for $3.5 million and Sicilian selling for $900,000 on the, on the same day was pretty special when you think about where we came from and, and where that got to. And, and that's what we're striving to do now through our new Valerie partnership of 2024 and also our TJ Colts partnership of 2024. So I'm going to show you a couple of the older horses first. This is um, a filly from our Valerie 2023 package. Her name is uh, Alinea. She's by Written Tycoon out of a mare that uh, Gay and Adrian train called Serena Bay. And she's led today by Luke Evans, who's kindly helping us out here. Luke uh, is a man of many talents. I was, did the good old flying start, did Luke. And um, now is sort of runs our operations here at Tullock Lodge and is helping us here today lead the horses around too. So Linnea, sorry. So she's a really um, nice three-year-old filly, as you can see. A lot of scope to her. She's beautifully bred. Her half-sister, Summer Loving, was placed in the Magic Millions on the Golden Gift. Um, actually placed in the Magic Millions after we purchased this filly, so a nice bit of value add there. And uh, her half-sister this year at Magic Millions made $1.25 million. So um, that's the family really on the up. She's a filly that's shown us a lot of ability. A lot of ability. Um, and now uh, it's just Adrian's job to try and extract that from her. Yeah, I think we can. She's, um, you know, I think she's better than what we've seen to, to date. We've tested her in some... Some very nice races. She, she debuted in the gym crack. She would she run fourth there. A nice slashing run there. She sort of got back and finished off really well. Uh, we brought her back for the Widden where things didn't sort of quite go to go to plan for her and then um, gave her a freshen up off the back of that. Just physically, she wasn't quite ready at the time. Um, you can see she's you know, plenty of size and scope about her. So it's just taking a bit of time to sort of really fill out into that frame when she sort of went through that initial sort of growth spurt off the back of the the gym crack there and um, gave her a bit of time. She she resumed with a nice run on the Kensington track. Um, form out of that race has stood up nicely for and off the back of that she just had a little freshen up. So she's she only just come back into the stables this this week, but you can see she's retained a lot of that sort of condition um, off that sort of last preparation. So she'll come to hand uh, quite quickly for us. She's held her coat nicely um, and a couple of sort of couple of gallops and and she'll sort of be back to that point where she was pretty quickly in terms of fitness. So we'll get her to the trials. Um, we might be able to sort of find a nice race at the back end of the sort of carnival, I think, for us. Obviously, it's important to try and give them the right grounding and go about the things the right way. We we had it. I find the best time to be trying to get some of that black type results is at, is at two, which is when she contested some of those uh, harder races. But now, just want to take a backward step and sort of get her going through the grades and doing it the correct way. So try and sort of kick off, uh, kick that kick that maiden off, and I'm sure she'll sort of take a lot of confidence and go right on with that. But uh, she's done very well in that short period of time that she had out. I think um, I think she looks great. Called Jupiter Hills. So um, this uh, we sort of have a theme to them as you've seen with with your partnerships. The theme for our second crop of Valerie Fillies was um, North America, USA. So Jupiter Hills is actually a, a famous golf course there in Florida where all the, um, I think, Phil Mickelson and a few of those guys, um, Ernie Ellis and those guys all have houses and play their golf at Jupiter Hills. So that's where the name came from. Uh, Frank Cook, one of your, your um, uh, Valerie partners, a big golfer, and I'm pretty sure he came up with that name for us. But she was by uh, a young stallion called Exceedance, first crop stallion, um, obviously a Coolmore winner. Liked his profile, but particularly liked this filly. She was from Easter, an English graduate, 
out of a group winning mare called uh, Miss Gunpowder. So Miss Gunpowder was a, a top class group winning mare. Uh, ran actually Group One rating. She was probably better than her her race her race sort of form actually read on a pedigree. Um, but like I say, more than anything, we just love this flea on type. And uh, she trialed very well as a two-year-old. Adrian and Gay thought enough of her to debut her in the Inglis uh, Nursery, which is a $500,000 race on debut. She started a third favourite, a $5 third favourite, so quite an open little market there. And I think uh, Adrian and Gay felt she was right, right in that race that day. Unfortunately, um, she came out of that race with a, a high tibial stress fracture, which um, I guess is just almost like a, a shin soreness up high. They make a full recovery from it with uh, with three months in the paddock. So she had her time in the paddock, and she's just back in now. She's trialed twice and now looking to head to the races, Jupiter Hills. Yeah, no, that was un unfortunate. So I don't think we got to see the, the, the best of her. She she tried really good and had a good good line on her going into that race. It was un un unfortunate because she's much better much better than that. So I think she'll um, I think she'll show that this this preparation. Uh, got a couple of nice options for her to kick off. She's entered to run Wednesday next week. We we may just opt to hold her over for another fortnight or so. It's just a, a quick turnaround from a race. Um, given the injury that she's had previously, just want to make sure she's got the correct grounding sort of going to the races. I know if we do the right thing by her now, she'll she'll be progressive enough to get through to the to the right grades. Uh, but yeah, you know, I think even just a couple more gallops, she'll really just sort of tighten up nicely in, in condition she'll clean up in the coat but i think um you can see it's just sort of come through coming through nicely now at this stage um i, I think she's right on target i've got a, got a lot of time for her she's she's a, she's a really nice filly and got a bit of scope to i'd say even distance wise bruce get over a little bit a little bit further if we, we need her to um particularly with the the fillies at this age in, in their three-year-old group you can you, know, you can get away with stretching and pass or beyond there um you know, beyond their sort of range in, in, in distance for their class. So I think easily up to a mile, you know, she'll be effective at 12, 14, any of those distance ranges for us. And that opens up a lot of options for those for those three-year-old fillies. Um, but I think she's one that we can back with a bit of confidence when she, she runs. So we'll just be going to a maiden race for the fillies. Uh, so when she kicks off, wherever you see her line up, she's, uh, she's well worth getting on. We have Paris. Um, who is the, the, the fourth of the, the, the first group. Um, she just had a, a, a setback as a, as a younger horse, so um, we haven't been able to get her to the races yet, but um, given her plenty of time to, to mature her up, and um, she's trialled up very nicely this, this time round. She's a, she, you can see why. She's a really fast filly. She's built, built, very, um, built very well. That, that power she's got behind the saddle there, um, and she's always been an explosive sort of style of filly, and it's always been trying to harness that that energy for her. And in her trial, she's 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 definitely trialed that way. She's showing good good tactical speed and and sustained that throughout uh, throughout the heat. So when she gets to the races, she's going to be trying to break their hearts. Um, she's very much going to be a speed filly, trying to ride to her strengths, utilize that gate speed, get them chasing us, and bring a bit of fitness into it. Um, I don't think she'll have the scope as a couple of those other fillies that I saw to get over that ground. Um, she's very much a um, very much a, an out and out sprinting type, and again, you can see that just with the physical makeup that she's got, the the muscle tone and definition. I know she's a bit older, but just the 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 way that those muscles adapt to training is different to those um, different sort of fibre types of the horse that will get over a little bit more ground. So we've got a couple of options for her. I think the, the first one as early as uh, next Sunday. Uh, she'll just kick off in a maiden race at the Provincials, um, just given the time off. So you can see how much of an advantage it is as a young horse and a two-year-old getting to the races so early and you know having those three or four runs at two or, or even sort of those early three-year-old career. You, you've got such an advantage in just your conditioning and um your, your race sort of tactics and exposure it just just helps when you get into the races so going to going to the races a maiden for the first time not as an older horse not not, not an easy thing to do
a uh, good example of why we try and have that spread our risk over that partnership. You know, like we bought four fleas that year for for a combined value of two million dollars. Say, one made three and a half, one made nine hundred, one made seventy five online the other day, um, and this filly, who I think probably has provincial aspirations, maybe midweek class if we're lucky, but not going to measure up to what we'd hoped she was going to be. That's just the nature of the game. That's why we try and, like I say, make sure we spread our spread our upside or potential upside, spread our opportunity because um, the good ones hopefully more than overcome your bad decisions, which which unfortunately in racing there's a few of them, oh, particularly when I'm involved. Seems the way anyway. But uh, uh, for all of us, you know, it's not an easy game. It's not hard to not not easy to find the good ones to be. Uh, you know, to be a Saturday City Class Metro horse, you have to be in the top 15% of your generation is basically where you need to end, where you need to be. To be a stakes filly, you need to be in the top 5% of your generation. Um, there's 12,000 foals born every year. So it's not, it's, you know, and you only get so, so, so much option at the yearling sales and how many you can buy. You know, we, we're bringing the stable 100, 100 120 uh, horses to the stable each year. So it's, um, you know, you, it's, it's uh, not an easy game. But it's one we're just driven by um, the challenge of it. We all love it. That's why we're all involved in it. And that's why when we do get to the track and we do have a nice success, it means so much and, and we can uh, and we really enjoy it. That's Mystery of Paris. She's really fast, well-named Paris Olympics on Mystery of Paris. She went out like a 100-meter flyer there at, uh, at the trials the other day. And um, I don't know who was that like who, something that someone that used to get out the blocks quick and then get run down late. She's like she's that, uh, we have a lot of time for her name is Hallett, H A L L E T T. Hallett is the name of a uh, an Indy five an Indy is it Indy five hundred? What are that like a racing circuit in America? Um, a bit like Sebring was named after the same thing. Sebring was a, a racing a raceway in America. Hallett's a raceway in America. Um, this filly was good enough to win on debut as a two-year-old, um, even as an Easter graduate, even as a daughter of Deep Field, even as a granddaughter of a Savabile mare. So a lot of her pedigree, a lot of her physique said, listen, I'm going to be a much better three-year-old than I am two. She was still good enough to win on debut at and two. performing as well as she is at the moment gives us a, a lot of confidence. I think it's a great indication there's still a lot of improvement to come. With that, I'd still be confident she can run a, a very big race for us first up. Um, that trial the other day was, um, was a lot of speed on. Um, it was a good test for her. And I love the way that she knuckled down to, to find the line. And even sort of looking at it today, you're sort of going back and amazed she did what she did at two already. You know, that she's uh, it's like she's sort of gone through another growth phase again. She's sort of shot up and is sort of a little bit, you know, quite, quite leggy. So she... She's just done it all through natural ability at that early stage. And um, even you watch her run in the kindergarten stakes, like 1,100 metres, just not her race against some really fast horses. They just had a run off her feet and the top of the turn, she was under a lot of pressure. But the way she rallied to, to pick herself up and finish third in the group three was, um, I, I think, the signs of a really nice filly going forward. And you know, I don't think we'll see her over 1,100 metres again in her career um she's a filly that's as we we're talking about before has got that scope to sort of really get over a bit of ground this prep so she's been set for the the princess series uh which kicks off in uh two weeks time in in the in the group two silver shadow stakes for the obviously for the three-year-old fillies and it's two 1200 meter runs into a 14 and 16 uh the flight stakes and we've had a bit of luck through the flight stakes over the most recent years uh, we won it last year with Tropical Squall, and um, you know I feel this could be a filly that would get to that race and be very competitive for us uh, in, in the flight stakes. So that's where she's heading to. But first up off what we've seen, got to have a sharp and ready to roll, uh, which she will be. Um, she wanted to have a sort of a bit fitter. She she obviously sort of went out nice and early, had a good break, um, and sort of want to try and come in that one that one leg earlier. Than some of the other opposition linking in, uh, but I, yeah, I, I like where she's at. Two year olds. This is a really sharp filly. This is a filly by Arm Invincible, out of a mare called Catwalk. Um, 
Catwalk actually won on debut as a two-year-old, a really high-rated mare that was lightly raced, got injured, and then was, a, again, a lot better than her race record reads. Um, her first foal is a horse called Sandoro Knight, who's won two from three in, um, in Japan and looks like a stakes fully in Japan. And this is Catwalk, second foal, a daughter of I'm Invincible. And have a look at the width of her pelvis and the width of her hocks and just the muscle tone on her for a young horse. And package that up with a beautiful hair, that big nostril, kind eye. Um, she just looks like an, a ready made rocket. Um, I say she's got a kind eye, but I, I think probably the biggest thing, Adrian, is <laughs> she, she's kind on the ground, but she's not that kind to the riders on her back. Uh, she she's very forward filly. I think you could, yeah, see she's a looks a naturally fast horse. She's just going to jump and run for us. So, um, yeah, usually you're educating them how to sort of accelerate and how to how to run quick. I think we're trying to teach her to slow down at the moment. Um, she's but she's going about it the the right way this week. We've had a really good really good week with her. She's always been very forward in a very forward in her work. Um, she just travels and uses herself so so well she's such a um yeah well-built filly you see like the the depth and strength that she's got so um you can imagine her lining up in in the gym crack for us and she's probably one of the better chances of our fillies to to do so um so it's an important preparation for them because they'll try and go all the way through this time in uh, so the plan will be to give her a jump out if we can jump out on the 23rd of this month um, we'll have some course proper jump outs uh, on on the 13th, uh, and they trial up on the 20 23rd of September. So that's her her program, which she's right on target for. If she can do all that, hold together. Um, yeah, I'm sure she's the uh, she's the exact type of horse that you could see lining up in the dream crack. And we've seen how important that's been for their for their value and establishing the, their career. And um, yeah, even just for the syndicate itself, it's a yeah, it's a it's it's a good sort of fallback if we can sort of try and nail that that early, uh, but she's she's um she's done very 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 well. She's just into a nice happy routine at the moment. Um, you don't have to do a lot with these young horses either. It's uh, they're, they're sort of very different training them to, to the older horses. Just got to keep you know keep them educated, keep them in a nice routine, and sort of not over not overdo it with them. Hopefully, just keep it nice and. Nice and simple, and get her there on the on the right day. <clears throat> a place of much water, um, and of course a beautiful area there on Lake Macquarie. So, our group, uh, the last filly, by the way, is set to be called Billabong. Hopefully that comes through. Uh, the group of fillies this year are named. The theme was Australiana. So we've got Kakadu Sunset, uh, we've got Humidity, we've got Billabong, and we've got Wanji Wanji. Place of much water. Um, Exceeding Excel, probably the best side in the world of two-year-olds. Um, this filly is a three-quarter sister to Calliope. It's a two-year-old's running family from top to toe. Um, and so far, so good, Adrian. You know, she, she's been excellent, this filly. Uh, very, very straightforward. Uh, very, very professional. Sort of one of the more sort of naturally, uh, I, I guess, sort of professional fillies that we've seen to date. So um, it's hard to quite know exactly what's, what's there in terms of what we're done with her at the moment. Like we've done just everything at a certain level. She's, she's sort of going around at 70% sort of thing each or in, in a gallop mornings. But next week we're actually about to start stepping her up and just teaching her to accelerate and quicken in, in her gallops. Um, and that's when we'll really start to get a, a good indication of what's there and how far we can take them. But um, from the feeling we're, we're getting at the moment, I'm sure she's going to give us plenty when she's, placed under a bit of pressure and I just like the way she goes about everything she's she's that constitution is going to take her all the way through this this preparation she'll be able to handle the pressure of a two-year-old campaign uh very very easily so um she's just starting to come right in the in, in in the coat that this time of year now that'll all just start to fall out um once we start giving her a little bit of sharper work and she starts getting fitter um now they're sort of treated a bit more like racehorses sort of early days sort of when they're in and out of the stable and in and out of the paddock they're they're not, not sort of really rugged and they're, they're out there in the winter and um you know it's just sort of really being a being a horse i guess but now they're 
now they're getting that next stage of things and um, going through the, the education on that racing preparation there. Um, they're ready to take that next step, which she certainly will.